Good evening, everyone. We'd like to start the uh, regular city council meeting. Call the regular city council meeting to order. The time of the meeting right now is 6.07 p.m. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Here. Wilson. Here. Tillman. Here. Williams. Here. Gardner. Here. Patton. Here. Here. Smith. Here. If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Anyone here from Pastor Stokes that would just to say the word of prayer? I don't see Pastor Stokes. All right. The next item on the agenda is uh, before we get to public comment, uh, let me just state the uh, recently Cayman City, just like many other communities, experienced uh, difficulties with the flooding that happened. Uh, in our city, in our county. Uh, Governor Pritzker, our office, working with the city council, Governor Pritzker declared a disaster. Uh, we are still working with the governor and the federal authorities to see what that disaster relief will look like for our Cayman City residents. Um, until that's determined, um, I just want the public to know, and I think our city council wants the public to know, that Cayman City we have done everything we can to lower our flood insurance rating. Cayman C, with our, with our community rating system, uh, we have the, the highest at five, which means that it saves residents money on your flood insurance. Uh, Cayman City has also put $10 million into our bond uh, to start not only re remediating and televising our underground system, but we are making the necessary steps to make sure that residents who have experienced flooding uh, at least it gets mitigated at some, some point. But it's up to residents to have flood insurance. I want to make that clear. It is not the city of Cayman City's responsibility to have flood insurance. Every resident has to have red flood insurance. That's why we took the steps to mitigate and have lower our CRS rating that will go towards lowering your flood insurance rating. Additionally, we are working with the U.S. Department of Engineers, Corps of Engineers, to not only fix the levee project, uh, which will reduce uh, flooding in the 6th Ward and the 7th Ward, but that's a $13 million project that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And we recognize that we have flooding in certain areas in Cayman City. We recognize that. That's why we have these two projects and we're working with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We put $10 million in our bond and we also have a lead line replacement program which has nothing to do with flooding, but just so you know that this city council is working uh, for programs for our city. The program I just mentioned is a $20 million uh, forgivable loan by the uh, um, IEPA uh, and it's also uh, a chance for our city to make sure that we're addressing issues in our community. Uh, so I just want to state that I know many of you have uh, sent emails, you have called about the flooding, um, but again, um, whatever we work out with the, the state of Illinois and the federal government, we will make sure if there's a chance for residents um, to receive some relief, that we'll make sure that the residents get relief uh, who experienced flooding. Um, our city engineer um, has some, uh, something to add to that as well. So our city engineer is Matt Berger. Matt? Thank you, Mayor. Um, one other item to add is over in the past year, the city has worked aggressively to try and um, address, uh, get involved in the CRS program. Now that's a voluntary incentive program. Not many communities are doing that. What the CRS program does is it, it helps the residents out by reducing their flood insurance. And in 2022, we went from a class six to a class five, which is one of the highest rating that you can get. 
which it means that now we go from a 20% discount for flood insurance for homeowners to a 25% discount. So that added layer. So the city's taken it very seriously, you know, over the course of the last couple years here to further provide some of those incentives to, to maybe help out the residents even more. And then couple that too with the levy program, the $30 million levy improvement um, that is underway right now with the U.S. Army Corps. Um, that should also to help out further with additional layers of protection in the future. Thank you, Matt. And the last thing before we go to public comment, and Alderman Patton, if you want to add to it, we have an over, overhead sewer program. Uh, this program is to help residents mitigate uh, any flooding that you may have. Uh, the city pays half, residents pay half. And this program is not only in our budget, but each alderman has money in their ward items that we can use for uh, not only this program, but also for our overhead sewer program. So not only has it, we've been aggressive, but just to let you know, this is what your city is doing to make sure that we address uh, flooding in our community. Um, at this point, uh, we would like to go to public comment. Item four on the agenda. Please step to the mic. Um, you have two minutes. Um, state your name and uh, state your, your matter before the council. Uh, Brother Joe Balkis, 117 155th Street. Just like I said, uh, you know, a budget is a moral document. You know, where people spend the money shows what they care about, you know, if they care about people or power. And uh, we got this UPS contract. It's the biggest private sector contract uh, there is. And they passed a tentative agreement after the union officials lied to the members and said we'd be on strike if we didn't have a contract. A tentative agreement is not a contract. So I'm encouraging, if there's any... Uh, Teamsters to work at UPS and Calumet City TV land to vote no on the contract. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor of Calumet City and panel, Alderman and Alderwomen. My name is Christina Joyner and I live on 156th Street, right uh, east of Burnham. And first, I want to start by saying thank you all for all that you do. And uh, Mayor Jones, I want to thank you for the efforts that you have made to help the citizens of Calumet City with some of the flooding and other issues. But Mayor, I, I would like for you to perhaps be more specific because Right now, the residents' concerns are not flooding. Flooding, seepage and sewage are two different things. Flooding endorsements and sewer backup endorsements are two different things. And we are very concerned about our sewer infrastructure here in Calumet City. We clearly understand that it contributes to the losses that we're suffering. And although there is an overhead sewer program that, that's been created to assist us there are some items within your program that hasn't been made available to us. I was denied um, the installation of a lift station that I believe could resolve some of my, uh, this issue with the sewer backup. We, we want to know that something is going to be done in addition to the levy repairs or upgrading. We want to know that something could be done about the sewer infrastructure. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. My name is Steve Briggs, Briggs Tree Service. I got several questions because I know there's a lot of tree services working in town and a lot of landscapers. I know there's a $500 fee to get the uh, license, but the problem I'm having, I guess, is the enforcement of the code because I'm one of the few that has a license uh, that in town, and there's tree services, a high visibility business, and if your code enforcement officers aren't going to follow it, 
why should I have a license? Why should I have a license? Over there at that Club Tamalek, I could tell you, one of your officers works there because the guy told me they hired Brian's Tree Service to do the tree and he works at that place. Come on, what, what's wrong with that? There's something wrong. And I, I got several other ones that I bid that I didn't get and other tree services got and they aren't even licensed in town. We are a high visibility business. I know last year I was the only tree service licensed in town and am I the only tree service doing work in town? I don't think so. So please be real specific. You mentioned bids. You mentioned that you, you since it's a public bidding process, you bid it on I call Club Tamalac. I okay, that's over. something private, not with the right, city. Right, but all I'm saying, no, I know that's private. Sorry about that. I know that's private, but what I'm saying is tree services and landscapers are required to buy a license in town. Am I correct here? Yes. Okay, it's a $500 fee. That's why a lot of businesses don't buy a license. And when I, all I want is that it even across the board. I want your code enforcement officers to enforce this. What happens when they catch people working without a license. How many tickets have been issued in the past several years for this violation? I'd like to know that. Okay. Sir, if you could give your information to Director Tillman or Jewel Stanley right there. If this is your first time bringing it up, then l allow us the time to investigate it. This is my first time hearing of this. Right, so right. but you, I, you understand what I'm saying. I do, uh, but I again, want it fair. I but want again it if, if we don't know about it, well, they should know about the code enforcement officers don't need to know about it. They know what the rules are here, don't they? Okay. We're not going to go back and forth, sir. Please okay, give your information you. to Director Tillman and to Jewel Stanley, and we will definitely contact you and get that information. Hello. Hello. My name is Renika, and this is Calvin Holloway, and we live off of a... You can could, you, could you speak up a little, please? We live off of... Is that better? Okay, we live off of 155th right off of Wentworth, and I'm here to speak about the abandoned buildings in the city. We have an abandoned building directly next to us that literally on July 4th, the roof caved um, and collapsed into our yard and barely missed my five-year-old son in the yard. There are, this building is owned by the city. Could you so hold on one second, please? Could you get the sound, gentlemen, because the sound is yeah. still bouncing off our ears and it's... Yeah, for all of us. Yeah. And it's While we wait, I'm going to pass this to you. <laughs> you can go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, this building is owned by the city. So there, if this had been a city residence with lawn service overshadowing over the yard, the walls are deteriorating, the doors are caving in, animals have encompassed the inside and taken over, the city would be ticketing and trying to demolish and fining the resident out of like nobody's business. But I can't do that because that's, that property belongs to the city. 123 155th Street belongs to Calumet City and there's nothing that has been done about this building. And now that it's falling in, not only do we have to not let our children play in the, per in the backyard, we have to clean it up and hope that it doesn't happen again with the animals and the, the debris and everything else about a building that is owned by the city. Okay. Your name. Could, could you provide your name and info to Director Tillman and to Jewel, and we'll make sure we get, get this matter addressed Yes. Hello, my name Hello. is Genesis Wampa. Um, I just had a few questions about the um, budget discussion you all were having earlier. Were you referring, when you were talking about the budget, were you referring to the um, year end accomplishments 2022 PDF that you created, the Google Doc that has all of the outline projects for the year of 2023? Could you speak up, please? Um, I couldn't hear your question. Oh, when you guys were discussing the budget earlier, were you referring to the projects outlined in the year end accomplishments 2022 PDF, the Google Doc? No, we, we were discussing the passage of the 2023 budget. Okay, so then may I ask for these projects um, and the implementation of them as far as the green alleyway that was needed on the west side of Prairie between Stewart and State. 
that construction has not begun. It was stated in here that you wanted it done by like March of 2023. Are there any plans for that construction of that alleyway? Did you, was your question the alley at Prairie is not completed? Mm -hmm. On the west end? The east, the east alley is done. The west will not be done? The west, I don't know the Was that a mistype in the Google Docs? Yeah. You know, supposed yeah, to be the east. I'm sorry, ma'am. Let's not go back and forth. Can you submit oh, your, your not information? Not sorry. Submit your information uh, via email or s submit it to Jewel or Director Tillman, and we'll make sure we respond to you. Uh, Mayor, it was the east alley, the alley east of Prairie Avenue, west of Madison, that was performed last year. <laughs> Could you state that again, Matt, for the record? The further, for the. the uh, the alley that was constructed last year was the alley east of Prairie Avenue and west of Madison Avenue, bounded by Stewart at the south and State Street at the north. So just for the residents, um, the public forum is an opportunity for you to come up and state your we would also get back to you, but we don't, we, we would like to not go back and forth. We like everyone to submit their information so we have an actual record uh, of us responding to your requests. Uh, and we'll make sure we do that via email and make sure that our department heads, some of them are here now, can answer your questions and make sure that we're answering it properly. You want to Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Christina Joyner again. There was something too that I, uh, forgot to mention that I would like to. My neighbor, Miss Lois Johnson, and I have made many, many efforts to try to find out how uh, FEMA is to become involved with assisting Calumet City residents that were affected by the rainstorm. And from your office to the director of FEMA and then the Inspect inspection and building office here, we, we get many different answers. Uh, nothing seems to be the same, none of the answers. So we don't feel confident that efforts are being made to ensure that FEMA does, that they don't leave us out. Uh, so we would like possibly to get some more accurate and definite information about that, like what efforts are being made, what is the procedure, is there anything we as residents can do to assist you and your staff to make certain that these opportunities are made available to us. And then lastly, sir, I also uh, struggle with the alley by my house, and I know that you may mention that you're going to eventually let us know which alleys have been slated for repair. But sir, I would like to, to ask if you would please consider mine. I've made complaints many years over and over again about my alley and I would just like for it to be considered for repair. Thank you. You're welcome. So let me, let me make sure that the record is clear and residents understand. FEMA is a federal agency that we have no control over. If the governor of Illinois declares a disaster and he or she directs funds to the city of Cayman City for residents affected or impacted by disaster, then they will tell us which funds and they set up an entire process that we have to follow as a city. To date, that has not been done. So when we contact FEMA and we work with FEMA, they will tell us how the process goes because they're a federal agency. And whatever flows through the state of Illinois, we will let the residents know. We did create a website for residents. As I mentioned earlier, um, the city of Cayman City uh, has put a lot of time and effort uh, and funds to the tune of $10 million um, for our bond, $27 million for our infrastructure projects, and I mentioned our lead line service program and our projects with the levy. 
So we are making sure that we address these matters, and I want to make it clear that we have nothing to do with FEMA. They're a federal agency. We, they tell us what to do um, when, it, when it comes to disasters like this, uh, and we work with them to make sure that uh, residents, whatever benefits come from that, we'll make sure we let you know. Um, we have one final uh, gentleman who would like to speak in public forum. Good evening, my name is Lewis Pollard. I live on the corner of Manistee and Cleveland. Uh, over the last 20 years, uh, my community has really changed. And my concern is my neighbors are just running through the stop signs. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Um, it seems to be no regard for the stop sign. They just roll right on through. My second concern is three o'clock in the morning. People are coming through my neighborhood with the boom, 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 noise pollution. That's very concerning and it's very disturbing. So I just wanted to come here and just talk about uh, my displeasure here because it makes no sense. And um, this was just a great community, and it still is, but I'm just real unsatisfied with the, the, the current affairs. Can you see in the back we have our assistant uh, police chief, Mr. Kwiatkowski, you wanna raise your hand? He's in the back. You can see him, uh, and he'll make sure he address your issues. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, again, we encourage residents to not only watch uh, our council meetings, but also attend live. We appreciate everyone who attended tonight. Uh, the next item on our city council agenda is approval of minutes. Uh, city council, you have had uh, the opportunity to look at the minutes as so presented on the city council. Are there any questions regarding item five, the approval of minutes? Uh, if not, can someone make, make a motion to approve the minutes as so stated on the agenda? So moved. Motion Second. made by Alderman Smith. Second by Alderman Williams. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Navarrete? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. Thank you, Alderman. Next item on the agenda are reports of standing committees. Um, finance, Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. I just would like to bring the attention of the public uh, to let the public know tonight the council uh, unanimously voted to approve the 2023-24 uh, budget. I would like to thank the council for all of their hard work, my colleagues, uh, the treasurer, the mayor, uh, financial uh, finance uh, director Cass Barrick for his hard work. Uh, this budget uh, means a lot to us uh, and it is going to impose no tax increase to the residents. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Public Safety, Alderman Williams. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just quickly, I want to uh, make sure I announce and invite the residents to the uh, National Night Out Against Crime. It is Tuesday, August 1st at 5 p.m. at the Cayman City Police Department. So please come out and uh, meet your community, your neighbors, and uh, get to know your uh, police officers. Uh, be some events and food and entertainment, and please just come out and uh, fellowship with your, the members of your community. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Williams. Public Utilities, Alderman Patton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just really briefly, I know you spoke, Mayor, um, about the sewer rebate program or the overhead sewer program that we have here in the city, and I just wanted to, to add on to that to make sure residents understand, you know, the process and the way the program works, because, you know, in times in the past, we've had people come in after the work has been completed and ask how they can be a part of the program. And the way that the program works is um, you have to first go to inspectional services when you're thinking about getting this work done fill out an application, provide multiple estimates for the work to be done, and then at that point, once it's approved, then the city will enter into um, the process of, of refunding up to the, the, I think it's 4,500 is the maximum amount now, the city will refund. 
um, up to that 50 percent. So um, if that's a if that's something that residents are interested in participating in, make sure you go to inspectional services first and talk to Director Tillman or any of the other people that are um, working over there to help you out and start the process there. Don't come after the work's been done and, and ask how to be part of the program. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. <laughs> Public uh, ordinance and resolutions, Alderman Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, now that we are done with the mini budget meetings, the ordinance and resolutions committee is planning to call the previously rescheduled meeting um, next week. I'm aiming for Thursday, but I'll certainly let all the aldermen and public know uh, in advance of that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Health, Education, and Welfare, Alderman Wilson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Sunday, August 13th, Health, Education, and Welfare will host our Back to School Resource Fair uh, at Calumet Memorial Park, located at 612 Wentworth Avenue from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. We do encourage high schoolers to come out because we have some resources for them that will help them transition into college when it is time. Um, so we do it, it is more than just pencils, pens, and, and book bags. We will have resources for the students in Calumet City of our community. Um, I did a few days ago have an opportunity to speak with the mayor and a couple of our aldermen, um, and I am interested in calling a health, education, and welfare committee of the whole. Um, we all have been watching the news and we understand the migrant crisis that is hitting Chicago. Calumet City is a border city. We are right off the expressway. When they run out of room in Chicago, we will be one of those cities that will be targeted. And not to scare anyone, but I am asking that we have this meeting to be proactive. So because we are always in the city creating um, programs that cultivate successful families, um, and sustainability of our residents. So we want to be able to have those programs in place and protections in place for our residents um, while we see how we can assist with the migrant crisis. As long as we are helping Calumet City first, I am not afraid or ashamed of saying that. Um, that's all I have from our report, thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman. Uh, permits and licensing, Alderman Smith. No report at this time, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Public Works, Alderman Navarrete. Nothing this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Next item is City Council uh, reports, um, Alderman Smith. City Council reports, Alderman Smith. Yes, I just want to first and foremost thank all the seven ward residents who came out to the July Town Hall. Uh, we had a good showing at DA's Banquet Hall. I'm encouraging all seven ward residents to come to the third, um, the uh, seven ward town hall meetings, which are held every third Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. These meetings will be at DA's Banquet Hall from 10 a.m. to noon. Also, please continue to report your concerns regarding either vacant properties or speed bumps uh, or just uh, concerns in general. Thank you. Alderman, the event on Sunday? Oh, the Park of uh, River Oaks uh, will be hosting a uh, Christmas in July event. Uh, what is it, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday? Uh, just wanna uh, share that with the park residents and uh, let's have a good time. Thank you. I know I said Saturday, Sunday, but it, what day is it? I mean, I'm sorry, Sunday. Sunday, right? Okay, Sunday. All right. Just want you guys to it's Sunday at the Park River Oaks. Thank you, Alderman. Six Ward, Alderman Patton, City Council reports. Um, thank you, Mayor. 
Just like to encourage residents to continue contacting my office um, with any issues they may have, 708-891-8196 or jpatton at calumetcity.org. Um, I think we've finally cleared up the little bit of a backlog that we had with issues and diverted them to the proper departments to be taken care of, and I think most of them have already been handled within the last couple of days. So that's it, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you. Can you guys hear us out there? No. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all right. All right. So we're not going to do all in favor. So we're just we're going to allow our uh, engineer to fix this, and then hopefully you can hear us. So let's take a pause and allow. We want to make sure you can hear us. Okay. Alderman, could you state that again, Alderman? Uh. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, I'd just like to encourage residents to continue calling, contacting my office with any issues they may have, 708-891-8196, uh, or via email jpatton at calumetcity.org. Um, and as I stated a moment ago, we have, I think, finally come to the end of um, the backlog of work orders and things that needed to be divvied out to different city departments. So um, I believe most of the work that I've submitted has been taken care of already, and if it hasn't, it should be shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Alton. Fifth Ward Alderman Gardner. Thank you, Mayor. Can you guys hear me? As always, I would like to encourage the Fifth Ward residents to continue to contact my office with concerns, 708-891-8195. Also, I would like to invite the Fifth Ward residents out. I will be hosting a property tax appeal and property after death workshop with uh, Cassandra Holbert uh, Elston. She's the Thornton Township Assessor. Uh, she will be uh, uh, showing the residents and talking to the residents about how to appeal property taxes. That event is going to be held August the 14th, 2023, 950 Legion Drive at the American Legion. It's going to start at 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, please be prepared to file your appeals. Uh, that's all I have. Oh, one more note. I would like to thank Public Works uh, for aggressively responding to several uh, complaints and concerns regarding vacant properties, uh, vacant property cleanup. Uh, debris removal from fly dumping and um, residents please continue to be patient as public works crews are responding to your request. Uh, that's all I have at this time. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Fourth Ward, Alderman Williams. Thank you. First, good night to God who makes all things possible. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I want to thank the residents for attending the series of summer uh, street meetings. They were, they were held in the midst of also the budget meetings uh, last Wednesday, Friday, and last Saturday. Uh, the res your resident service requests have been uh, compiled and summarized for their perspective departments, and they will be uh, forwarded and for follow-up and update. Um, I want to thank the city departments that, that represented well and answered questions, public works, inspectional services, the police and fire department. I want to thank them all for coming out. And I also want to thank the residents that attended the soup giveaway was, that was last Saturday. Uh, we had over 300 residents that showed up and got suits, including uh, students from the community and students from the uh, 100 Black Men Mentee Program. Uh, I want to thank the sponsors, Rucker and Rucker, uh, the city council, and uh, Mayor Jones. Um, we will be giving away more suits at the uh, third and fourth ward back to school picnic. That is August 12th, Saturday. Um, yeah, Saturday, August 12th, and I think the picnic starts at 12. But Alderman Tillman will um, give you more information on that shortly. Uh, and there will I will not be at the third and fourth ward meeting coming uh, August 6th. Uh, I will be uh, busy that day, so uh, Alderman Tillman will be solo hosting the third and fourth ward meeting for the month of August. And that is it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Williams. Third Ward, Alderman Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to let the residents know that we are hosting the seventh annual back to school picnic, and we encourage all residents to come out. Um, that will be held August 12th 
at noon at Downey Park, which is, uh, the address is 300 Jeffrey Avenue. We'll have a number of resources available to all residents of all ages, uh, free cell phone giveaway. We'll have, as Alderman Williams said, more suits so that we can make sure our high school and college students are ready for that first, first job interview. Um, as always, we're gonna have DJ, performers, uh, back to school and supply giveaway, live music, games and prizes for everybody. So again, we encourage everybody to come out to the third and fourth ward, seventh annual back to school picnic. Again, August 12th at noon at Downey Park. Um, additionally, the third ward town hall is August 7th, Monday at 6.30. Um, I encourage, as always, all residents to come out. Again, that's August 7th at 6.30. Um, I also want to let the residents know that called me this week, um, the third ward, we will be doing our callbacks tomorrow starting at noon. So if you left me a, a message, please be patient. I'll be calling everybody back starting tomorrow. Um, and this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I'll be doing select home visits. So I'll be in the neighborhood going around doing that. So thank you. That is all I have. Thank you, Alderman. Second ward, Alderman Wilson. Thank you. I'd first like to start by thanking Mayor Jones, Director Kasperi, Finance Director Kasperi, Treasurer Tarker, and Finance Chair, what's your name? Gardner. <laughs> Alderman Gardner, for moving us through the process of having and coming to um, a, a balanced budget. Thank you, Alderman Gardner, for allowing us to have healthy debates during the process. Um, and congratulations, Council, on having yet another balanced budget. Uh, the street light list for the second ward will be sent in for review uh, by Public Works on July 31st. So if you have a street light in your area that I need to come and, and look at or have Public Works look at, please text me, 708-586. 4990, or you may email me, mwilson at calumetcity.org. Um, text messages hit me faster than an email. Uh, thank you to Director Tillman and your entire Department of Inspectional Services for continuing to go above and beyond for the residents of Calumet City, but especially the second ward. I truly appreciate you and everything you do, and you do it with such grace and such kindness. Thank you for being a, an, a great representation of our city for everyone that walks through your door. Thank you to our public works. You stay on the ready because I always have things for you to do and it's accomplished uh, for the residents in our ward. Uh, second ward, especially the residents that live on Hoxie, Buddy Bear is an issue. It is an issue that I have uh, sent in to the mayor's office, um, I send in the clips, whatever I post to social media, I send to uh, this administration. Um, you have to start calling. I understand that I am the elected voice for our ward, but you all pay taxes. We wake up at seven in the morning to boom, 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 bang, bang, bang and it is disruptive. We have a mature tax paying ward uh, with people who work night shift early in the morning. Some of our seniors are disabled and sickly. To be awakened from your sleep with that kind of house shaking noise is disrespectful and unbecoming of any business wanting to be here in Calumet City. Um, I've started tagging Buddy Bear, and I'm asking them to fix it. It is not okay. It is not okay to open our windows, expecting fresh air, and receiving weed smoke. This is not okay. The mayor is aware of it, and I'm sure he's working to remedy it on our behalf. Um, August 13th, again, is the Health, Education, and Welfare Committee's Back to School Resource Fair. Residents of Calumet City, there are so many back to school resource fairs going on in the month of August. If your kids do not pass school, I'm personally coming to the school. We are giving more resources out than any other city in the south suburbs. 
If you would like to donate to the Health Education and Welfare Committee, you can go to alderwomenwilson.com and donate, or you can come and donate school supplies. Um, we do ask that you register alderwomenwilson.com. As of this morning, we had 859 Calumet City residents registered for that fair. So we are also looking for a few volunteers. Come on out of the house and engage with the community. I would like to announce the second award winner of Best Yard, Miss Tabitha Easter. She lives on the 600 block of Calhoun. If you go to the social media page, if you don't have social media, you can go to alderwomenwilson.com and it plugs right into that website. You can see her beautiful flowers. Uh, you can see her be beautiful yard. And I'd like to thank all of the residents for maintaining your yards and really making our ward somewhere where we want to live, making it comfortable and making it a home. Thank you. If you have children that would like to cheer, the Calumet City Chargers is partnering with Chargers Elite All-Stars and offering free cheerleading registration for game day cheer. You can go directly to calumetcitychargers.com for more information. I think that's all I have. That's a lot. I'm just so excited to see everybody here. Thank you. Thank you for the boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Alderman Navarrete, first ward. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, I just want to thank residents for attending the first ward town hall yesterday evening. Uh, we reviewed ongoing first ward projects. We also reviewed the past year's most requested services in the first ward. Uh, the top two, number one was, no surprise, alley grading. Uh, number two was tree removal and trimming. Uh, for alley grading, uh, the mayor mentioned um, we passed a bond. Uh, we actually, uh, $2 million aside of that bond for Public Works equipment. Uh, Public Works will be buying three new sets of machines for alley grading. Uh, currently, we are um, over 100 on that list. So we get roughly seven requests a week. Uh, we could only perform, I'm sorry, we could perform seven alley grades a week currently with our equipment, so we're hoping to triple that with the, with the uh, addition of the new equipment. So we hope to address this issue here in the next year. Uh, number two is tree removal and trimming. Uh, again, the theme of the night, we passed the budget uh, this evening. We did increase the tree trimming budget line item in the Public Works uh, budget. Uh, so you, we may see Mr. Briggs out there, we'll see. Um, uh, trimming trees and hope to catch up on on that list as well uh, So just a special thanks to the VFW for hosting uh, Hosting us and just an announcement that they do have a, a newly renovated hall So feel free to go and rent that hall. It's beautiful. But that's all I have this evening mayor. Thank you. Thank you uh, Item eight are informational items to be accepted and placed on file. Just want to recognize uh, the residents who have sent emails regarding our city employees for their uh, bravery, their work in the community. At our next city council meeting, we will have these employees here. We will also place these uh, letters of commendation in their files. Uh, but one is Director Cheryl Tillman from Inspector Services, a resident uh, specifically not only highlighted uh, Director Tillman, but also highlighted Inspector Rogers, um, the entire Inspection Services Department. Uh, for incident, uh, but also acknowledge the great work that Inspectional Services is doing for the business community and for the residents in our community. A second letter of commendation uh, recognized Officer Henderson for his bravery during a serious incident. So we want to make sure that uh, we give our employees their flowers while they're here and also recognize the good works that our department heads are doing and also our employees are doing. Uh, the third commendation came from uh, Assistant or Deputy Chief Bendinelli regarding our ESDA department, our Public Works department, and of course our Police Department for the exceptional work that they did 
uh, on an incident on July 5th. So again, we want to thank them. Uh, we will have them at the next city council meeting. We will recognize them um, and also provide them uh, with a special recognition from the city council and from my office. Uh, lastly, pointing out on the informational items, uh, this city council and Cayman City was awarded uh, $300,000 Invest in Cook grant. Uh, this grant came from uh, not only the county, but it recognizes what we're doing in Cayman City uh, to not only invest in our department, but part of this grant is going to go for our application that's aligned with connecting Cook County and also to the long range plans of Cook County um, in partnership with the city of Cayman City. So I want to thank Cook County President Tony Preckwinkle, thank the county for always recognizing Cayman City, and we'll make sure we put this uh, $300,000 to good use. Um, the county awards for this invest in Cook at least 30 to $40 million a year, um, and it's good that Cayman City is being thought of by the county that we get this kind of money. So these are the information items. Is there a motion to accept these information items and place them on file? So, so moved. Move. Second. Motion made by Alderman Wilson and second by Alderman Gardner. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, now we're getting an echo. So the next item under new business, um, item number nine. Before we move to item number nine, I would like to uh, entertain a motion to uh, table item four under new business and item six under new business. Item four is a motion that our city attorneys are still researching. Item number six is a program that we discussed um, that we would like to table until the next city council meeting. So is there a motion to table item number four and item number six? So moved. Motion made by Alderman Smith. Is there a second? Second, second by Alderman Wilson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item four and six are tabled. Before we move on to item number one on the agenda, uh, for the record, uh, item number one is awarding the sidewalk replacement program contract uh, to Davis Construction. Um, Davis Construction, the lowest bidder was J.J. Newell. Uh, J.J. Newell set forth a material exception in his bid concerning the completion date required for the bidders. By definition, this made the J.J. Newell bid non-responsive and therefore disqualified from consideration. Illinois law requires that the bid be awarded to a responsible bidder submitting the lowest responsible bid. Accordingly, accordingly, the lowest responsible bid for responsible bidder is that of Davis Concrete. So the motion is in order that's on the agenda to award the 2023 sidewalk replacement project an estimated amount of $117,657 to Davis Concrete Construction. That's item one on the agenda. We can take that motion separately. Is there a motion uh, to approve item 9A1? So so move. Motion second. made by Alderman Williams, second by Alderman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you call uh, item number 9A1 for roll call? Yes. Wilson? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. If the council so chooses, uh, we can take items uh, two, three, and five um, together. Is there a motion to approve new business items two, three, and five? So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion made by Alderman Williams. And second by Alderwoman Wilson. May we have discussion? Yes. I'm sorry, item number three doesn't have a date. Uh, item number three? Yeah. OK. 
Okay. Go ahead, Alden. Oh, it doesn't have a date. I was wondering what the date was for item number three. For the Public Works knows what day to get out there. Can we approve it, Alderman, um, with the date provided to Inspectional Services? Sure. I don't know. I, it's in yeah. the email that was yeah. submitted. Yeah, no, that's fine. Just want to make sure Public subject, Works gets the subject information. Subject to the, the date provided to Inspectional Services, you want to do that? I, it's in the email. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I said I just want to make sure Public Works has the right date to be out there. That's all. Okay. So motion was made by Alderman uh, Williams, second by Alderman that Smith. Wilson. That was Wilson. Williams and Wilson. Williams and Wilson. I'm sorry. That's the motion on the table. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll on, uh, to approve items two, three, and five under new business? You go, okay. Navarrete? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Item B are building permits, fence permits, and new, new garage construction. Does anyone uh, have any questions regarding the new, f new fence construction items that are on the agenda? If not, can someone make a motion to approve item B1, new fence construction, as stated? So moved. Motion made by Alderman, Alderwoman Wilson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you please call a roll? Navarrete? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. Smith? Yes. See our resolutions and uh, ordinances. They're uh, C1, 2, and 3 on the agenda. Are there any questions regarding C1 through 3? Does C1 go with new business item that we table? Uh, no, Alderman. Uh, okay. This uh, item that was approved, this amendment to uh, redevelopment agreement. I know. I believe the amendment was uh, allowing the city an option to buy back the property if it doesn't have the uh, improvements that the agreement is so stated in there. Was there anything else? I think that was no, that, correct. Nothing that. else. Mm. That was the agreement that came before the council when we approved it. So we wanted to make it clear that city council had a clawback if the work is not done on the property. Alderman Tillman. I make a motion to approve item C1 through 3 as presented. Motion made by Alderman Tillman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Smith. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Navarrete? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Tillman? Yes. Williams? Present. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. yes. Smith? Yes. All right, everyone, before we approve financial matters, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into a brief exec executive session to discuss potential litigation employment of a specific individual uh, and pending litigation. Is that correct? So there's a motion to go into executive session for a brief executive session at 7 o'clock p.m. So moved. Motion made by Alderman Smith. Is there a second? Second. Se second by Alderman Williams. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone, we will be in executive session briefly. Uh, we are going to come back and conduct uh, business. You're more than welcome to stay around, but we are, again are going to be in a brief executive session uh, and we'll be back. Everyone, we are back. Uh, is there a motion to return to the regular order of business at 7.20 p.m.? So moved. Motion made by Alderman Smith. Is there a second by Alderwoman Wilson? We are back in the regular order of business. Uh, we have uh, a couple more matters to take care of on the D financial matters. Um, before we make a motion, Alderman Gardner to address item number 31 and then also number 37 to table. Uh, and also under item number 40, we will provide a update in writing to Alderman Navarrete. Um, so Alderman Gardner, can you uh, talk about item number 31 which is involve our land bank authority. 
Yes, I would just like to bring to the attention of the public item number 31 on tonight's agenda is a motion to approve payment to the Cook County Land Bank Authority to purchase four properties, uh, 1460 Huntington Drive, 330 Burnham, 716 State Line, 16174 Park Avenue. Um, with that one being the, uh, the focus, this one is a 10 acre property uh, that will be in conjunction with the Blues Water Run Economic Development Project. It's gonna provide the city uh, much open space uh, for an entertainment destination. And I think this is a great deal for the city. All properties are gonna be sold to the city uh, at the cost of $21,750. And also item number 37, I would like to uh, make a motion to defer action on that item tonight and approve items one through 36, 38 through 47 as presented. Motion made by Alderman Gardner, second by Alderman Williams. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Yes. Yes. Tillman? Yes. Williams? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Patton? Yes. Smith. Yes. Thank you, Council. Financial items are approved. Uh, unfinished business, uh, Alderman Navarrete. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to request a brief report from our city engineer regarding the Calumet City Industrial Park Utility Improvements Project. Just an update, we approved um, some invoices. I was hoping to get just an update on that project. The United States Economic Development Administration uh, project is uh, it's an industrial park uh, that we're doing off of Riverside Drive. Um, currently where it sits right now is we are we have plans designed, um, permits. Actually, ironically, I have them here for execution in my hand. Um, to give to the mayor later on today, and then we're going to go for permits. Um, this will be utility and road, um, and it's linked to job creation and in Calumet City um, along Riverside Drive. Uh, there is expansion of the businesses um, that is being proposed by one, a couple of the businesses there, um, and it's going to open up some of the other properties also to for future uh, businesses to locate here in Calumet City. And this is part of an economic development and. Um, initiative that the United States government is giving us 4.4 million with Cook County supporting providing the $800,000 local match um, for the construction of that project. So um, we are anticipating the project going to bid. We're just uh, awaiting the final once we get the permits in um, and also too once we have uh, the permits in and ironed out some of the funding criteria. There's a little bit of paperwork associated with it now that we're at this stage of the project. It will be going to bid, and you will see it in construction either late fall or early spring. Thank you for the update. It's an exciting first word project, and hope to see some business ex expanding. I think HB Taylor is expanding uh, already, so thank you. That's all I had this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Second ward, Alderman Wilson. Thank you. Um, July 31st is our last Monday night block meeting for the month of July. We've met every Monday in July for phase one of the building leaders on our corner uh, program. And so July 31st is the last Monday in this month. And we will meet and discuss phase two. We are very excited for phase two. Um, if you would like to attend, please text 708-586-4990 um, with your information if you're in the second ward so we can update our list. Again, we hope everyone registers for the Health, Education, and Welfare's uh, Back to School Resource Fair. Again, that's August 13th from 11 p.m. Um, um, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. 11 p.m. is a different type of party. So 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, August 13th at Calumet Memorial Park, 612 Wentworth Avenue. You can register by visiting alderwomanwilson.com. Thank you. Thank you. Third Ward Alderman Tillman. No, not the mayor. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alderman. Fourth Ward Alderman Williams. Uh, just if you have any issues, please uh, contact the Fourth Ward, 708-212-2240 or 708-891-8194. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Fifth Ward Alderman Gardner. Nothing further tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Sixth Ward Alderman Pad. Nothing more, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman. Seventh Ward Alderman Smith. Nothing more. Thank you, Alderman. There being no further business to come before the regular, ready, regular city council meeting, is there a motion to adjourn at 7.26 p.m.? So, so moved. Second. Mo motion made by Alderman Smith, second by Alderman Gardner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 7.27 p.m. Thank you, Alderman.